Hi, this is Our Beard. I'm back after quite a big hiatus and I have a ton of stuff I want to film. So I'll start with the pressing matters that I have to pass this information on. And uh, the rest of the videos will follow hopefully in the next few days. First of all, you probably know by the title, I want to have a double review. I want to have a review of uh, Kalima Seal's Highlander 3 sword. The they ran a very, very tempting offer of 25% off and free shipping a few months ago. And I think the last week of May. And we were all tempted. So I got it. I want to compare this sword to an actual long sword. This is entrusted to me to keep safe for my teacher for, a few, for some time. Until he gets settled in his new home. And this is the original 1970s something Deltin longsword or war sword. As you can see, it's got a shorter pommel. And I'll compare these two weapons. Now, this is proper war sword. This weighs about three pounds. I don't have the exact measurements. Two and a half, three pounds. The length of the blade is three feet and. Three inches. That's about 97 centimeters. And the pommel, the the whole grip assembly, is another nine inches. So the total length is about just under four feet, or 122 centimeters. And you can see it's quite maneuverable. Center of balance is right about here and that's about five and a half inches from the tip here or about six inches from where you grip the sword the point of rotation i don't know if you'll be able to see this is the point where if you move the sword it would like to turn around so here it's about here this is pretty close to the center of percussion as well that's where you want to hit if you want to maneuver the sword that's pretty much where it goes around now I got this sword because it's the closest one I had to long sword proportions and on Kalimasil's line, at least for now. We hope to get them to do more historical stuff. Even though this is looks like a Scottish long sword or a wrongly named Claymore, they, they aren't really Claymore just a big sword, usually they were actually broad swords called Claymore. And as you can see <coughs> this has a blade about ninety-four centimeters or three feet and two inches and the hilt assembly adds another 37 adds another 14 inches to a total length of 130 centimeters that's pretty close of course weight wise this is just above 400 grams I think maybe one pound maybe less I don't remember the exact measurements and center of balance is also pretty close to the hilt as well this is just about here and that's about six inches from the hilt about seven inches from where you you grip the sword the center of rotation is also a bit closer to the hilt than in the long sword but it's pretty similar so yeah you can probably use this same way you would lose a long sword, apart from hitting the face all the time. And compared, this is the first Kalim Seal sword I ever had. Um, this, of course, can't really block anything unless you get caught right here. This won't block, but this will. They don't hurt that much. They've got a very nice flex to it. And tip caution here in Israel, we have stabbing. So you do feel there's some sword of fiber reinforcement I think it's a, in the shape of a cone which going up beyond the, the core and into the rubber so it's pretty nice you can hardly get a press in to feel the core but you would not feel it when hitting and usually not when stabbing the hilt has a lot of these little nail like protrusions some of them about half have little bubbles in them but that doesn't really affect the aesthetics too much the colors are very nice Pretty much perfect blade is pretty much perfect 
and all these little details are actually shown in a few finds in museums. So you can actually go and see the exact sword that has these markings. Very, very happy. Now you can compare these two swords together. You can see the blades are almost the same. Tapering, this of course has to be thicker, but they reach almost the same point. The guards are almost the same width. This has a, a nice Scottish ornamentation here, so it might be a bit longer, but it's pretty much the same proportions. The grip is where it really varies. This is the historical war sword grip. They didn't have a lot of room. This was pretty early medieval. This is a late medieval sword. This is, was used mainly on a battlefield, not as a civil defense. And, but you do have a place to keep both hands here. On this sword, you have a lot of leverage. You can use it here, here, and you can do a lot of stuff, pretty much like normal modern faders are. Um, but faders have a bit, bit longer here sometimes, but it's really close to these proportions. And anything you practice with a fader, you can do with this, especially if you're LARP, you're, you don't use any hand protection that take up space. On faders, we have to have these long because we use very, very thick hand protection to make sure we, we leave the practice with the same number of fingers. But for LARPs, this is a lot of flexibility. So I would recommend the sword. I would like them to have more swords of these proportions. Um, not ha doesn't have to be the Scottish type, but just these proportions. Uh, because the way the Academy Seal uses the term long sword or bastard sword, isn't exactly the way we use it in the historical studies. And thanks for watching. See you soon. <clears throat>